All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, Mark Sajan here again. Uh, so we will focus on the animation of the body. Uh, so right now, just a quick uh, overview about the lip sync and uh, the setup of the of the scene. So what we have here, we have the file, the audio file loaded in. And if you don't hear the audio file playing it's like during uh, the normal play, it, you just have to go back, open up Curve Editor, double click on sound and change the audio quality okay so that usually solves the problem if you have accidentally removed the timeline the track bar here and you don't have the curve editor or anything like that there's two ways to get this back so right click on here and um, choose uh, tr uh, time slider so that's one option or uh, you can go up here and customize show UI and show track bar Okay, so these two can bring back this uh, uh, The timeline and the time slider itself. Okay, so uh, another thing um, Perhaps uh, you can experience a crash uh, During the load of the uh, dope sheet. So don't be surprised then you just have to restart and open up dope sheet and look for the waveform and uh, adjust the keys okay so you can adjust those with this one and of course you can zoom in now if you are zooming in and you have the zoom tool selected when you're going back to the main window it is switching back to normal of course normal selection tool but if you're going back to the uh, Adobe sheet it will switch back to the originally selected zoom tool for example okay so this uh, it's kind of a uh, neat feature to have okay so here's our figure and uh, what we have uh, it's a basic lip sync. Like the and uh, the reason I'm showing this because uh, right now nothing else is animated just these controls and as you see these are all these are the keys and uh, whenever you select something that particular uh, control will show the keys on the timeline. Okay, so if you have multiple elements selected like the jump control Then we of course we have all the keys uh, The other thing is uh, usually it's a great way to watch just this for feedback Because when you're playing it just let me play and just watch how these are moving It's like military intelligence Go again so the main goal is not to use everything at the same time. The main goal is to use the least amount of uh, control that you can use to get the sound. And uh, once once it is uh, just uh, so as I'm dragging the yeah, slider, as you yeah. see, we have for example an E sound here, and uh, usually control and right click and let me just focus in. So we have a, a zero key, and then uh, we yeah, have yeah. a max max value, and then it returns yeah, back yeah. to zero. Okay, so yeah. many of the troubles are coming from forgetting the uh, return the value to zero. So when you have too many morphs overlapping, it can cause problems on the go. So please don't forget that when you have something start from zero you can turn on auto key n is the hot key for auto key start from there you can always switch to move mode and uh, don't forget you can and have to use parent mode when you're controlling these and then you can set a key at the zero stage yeah, yeah, and then yeah. moving at yeah. a maximum and then make the change make the move and it will record so from zero to the next key it will perform the change and then you can just select and copy and that way you can create a second zero key to go back to the original state right so this is how uh, we can move this is what we can do now the other thing is right now we have no camera used there is a camera in here in the scene but it's not used we are just focusing on the lip sync so we are not uh, really want to uh, get to the camera so that will be the next step and when we are just 
start working on the body, we have to set up a, a little bit of a different uh, scene um, that's a little bit more suitable to uh, check the um, uh, the errors. Okay, another thing, uh, when you are using uh, previews, uh, quickly don't forget to make the window active. And when you press Shift V, uh, it will bring you back the dialogue and uh, usually it remembers many many of the settings but uh, sometimes you have to uh, adjust those now in my case uh, the, because it was freshly open so we have a visual style and it is set back to standard and uh, usually the surrender viewport is perspective or camera so usually right now the active window is the perspective window this one so this is why we see perspective here but if you forget to set the, your scene you can just go in here and check okay front front or perspective all right so if you see front yeah you don't have to close this and going out just switch to perspective uh, the other thing when you are uh, creating the animation later on we will have this bone object mode I will get back to this but right now just let me hit on create and uh, yes there is the lip sync created so it would take some time but soon we will get there and it will automatically play with uh, go together with uh, Media Player Classic. Now I like to use Media Player Classic because uh, it has some uh, quite good features. So the main feature I like to use is I can slow it down, speed it up. I usually it's slow down so I'm pressing control and arrow uh, arrow down so control and arrow oh, down. Yes. And then oh, just... yes. So I can I can play this a lot. It's much easier to recognize. Now you have a slowdown feature within 3ds Max. So if you want to go that and test it, you can choose this half speed or quarter speed. Uh, this might work also, but uh, depending on the computer power, it's usually better if you are rendering a preview. Now once you have the preview settings done, you don't have to press anything actually just shift we and hit enter and that's it and it will run so let me just cancel this and I don't want to save it and play it. all right so here we go and now we are uh, about to start the uh, animation of the body so for that uh, we should go back to the beginning of the time and because we are at this file we are at the seven hundred range so let me quickly go back start time to zero and the end time will be a hundred and just uh, let me press ok and uh, what we do need is we will animate with the bows so from now on I don't want to select the body I don't want to accidentally move it um, so for that uh, we need to freeze the body so once the body is selected I can check right click and go to object properties and check if it's enabled or not so show frozen in gray is unticked that means if I'm right clicking and uh, free selection I'm not able to select it anymore and that that one's good so if, if I have bones now I can select the, the tongue I will do the same thing with the tongue and the eyes so these three are selected right click object properties and let me check these are not Untick, so I'm ticking that and then freeze too. So free selection, so I can't select anything here. Okay, I will keep it as it is, so it's not frozen because uh, if I have to, I can move it away. Same thing here, uh, and of course, if you want to make corrections, that's it. Now, but what about the bones? So Layer Explorer is opened, it will take some time and um, we have a rig bones layer so let me enable the visibility of the rig bones and here we go now uh, if we are creating 
So let me, yeah. let me create a preview, okay? Because something interesting may happen. So I'm pressing Shift V, and uh, if I just render it out, it will show the bones. So if I'm just creating, this is what happens. Uh, let me cancel this. I don't want to see the bones on my preview. So let me cancel. Don't want to play. And Shift V again. And already this was this uh, controller was not visible because it is a shape and it was not ticked if i want to turn off the bone object i can enable it the so bone object disabled let me create this one and now i will be able to see the uh, actor the uh, comedian and also the figure at the same time okay so that's uh, really a neat feature. Right now we have no movement, so it's not really interesting. But uh, but at least we see that we it's the, the control panel is not visible and the bones are not visible as well. Uh, regarding to the rendering, uh, these bones are set to disabled to render. So let me open up the the uh, bones layer. And uh, as you see, the rendering option is turned off, except to forearm bones. Okay, so these forearm bones were added afterwards to make the forearm twist a little bit smoother. And uh, as they are, they were enabled and left to be rendered. So turn this off. Okay. Now, because the mesh actually is frozen, I can just click in here and easily select the bones. So I can start with that. Um, I can start uh, with the animation of that. But before we're jumping in, um, let me add more room. Actually, I can turn this off now. We need more space. So what we can do is uh, check the motion panel and see what we have because we have to have an animation layer so right now there are no keys so if i'm selecting these just the body there are no keys at all so this is the uh, the moment when i can start uh, working on the animation so going to the perspective and um, uh, this is what happens uh, right now I'm not really worried about uh, the the graph editor so I don't want to see that um, so I can just shrink it down a bit more so it, it is still there but it's not eating that much of a space and what I will do is just moving it and I will animate in uh, in this window the reason is I have to have a camera so before we are jumping in and making uh, animations uh, it's time to uh, deal with the camera so if we press C it will get to at the at the physical camera 001 so there's only one camera this is why if you press C it will always get you to the single camera view now I'm not really satisfied with this camera. It's not really matching uh, to the scene that we have. So let me turn off auto key and I will explain why. Because if you are in the camera view and you are moving the camera away, so let me just drag the time slider and let me make a correction of the camera. So this is what happens, I'm orbiting the camera. Uh, that actually creates an animation of the camera, okay? It's good. If you want to use it actually but if not it it will become a mistake so what we will do is just let me go back and control Z and undo and during the adjustment of the camera I'm turning off auto key and uh, making my adjustments so orbiting the camera and pressing shift F why because that is the safe frame all right so safe frame will show what will actually be visible within the range of the camera so let me zoom in a bit more and uh probably this this is this is what we have okay so this is a uh, slight tilt okay just a slight tilt so here we go we will start from here 
And now I'm turning back on the animation and zooming out, just changing a few things and going to the front view. All right, so I'm selecting the elements in the front view. Uh, I can easily select uh, those that are not really visible in the camera and I can just uh, start working on that. Now, before I start the animation of the of the body, let me check what's going on with the, with the body uh, language of the, of the actor. So starting from zero, and till about 40, about uh, 30, uh, the, the actor is switching weight, okay, so the, uh, here we go, and stands back, okay, so we have a kind of a offset of weight, there's a slight rotation on here, angle snap is turned off okay because angle snap is by default is restricting us to rotate by five degree incrementals so it's a good idea to turn it off otherwise you can't really adjust it uh, carefully so we have exactly the opposite so let me get back to this to the first okay so now it's a zero keyframe and now at 30 from this right side position we are switching back to a left side position and moving it and maybe maybe a little bit elevation so it's just bringing it up and uh, sometimes it's more natural if you slightly rotate it okay so right now we have only a part of this movement so from zero to 30 we have some kind of a general pelvis movement and uh, of course we we do have uh, a head movement so the initial position of the head will be so let me select the head uh, the head will be tilted a little bit and of course we also have to animate the eyes so right now I'm just moving these I'm switching uh, so it's much easier to rotate it in the camera and usually the best way to rotate it is not the view mode usually for rotation it is alt right click and, and um, setting this to local okay you can also switch it here to the local mode all right and then at 30 we have this different position looking in the opposite direction and uh, don't forget always animate with the body first all right because when the body moves it will move everything and it's uh, not really a good idea to adjust uh, the head first and, and hands and whatever make sure that the body is moving first and then you can uh, animate uh, the rest and usually the movements are starting from the body anyway so it's a good idea to have that okay so right now we have this initial change and uh, we also have to follow it with the eye movements so there is a blinking if you want to add a blink that you can go here but right now we are much more curious about the eye movements so here we go this is our eye control and uh, the figure is not looking into the camera so uh, it's, it's, there's nothing yet there. At the zero position, it is looking outside to this right corner. So I'm selecting the move and change. Just look. Okay, so it's looking outside and dragging out. And at 30, he's looking in front of him. No. The first eye movement is performed here during the blink. And at 15, uh, looking in front, but below. Now here comes the big question. So usually the eye movements are saccadic type of eye movements. So these eye movements are not gradual eye movements. The, the eyes are usually can't really look just by browsing through things so 
what you have to do and what you have to maintain is usually the eye movements are performed quickly. If you're following with your eyesight, if you're targeting uh, to a moving object, then yes, the eye can uh, easily follow that moving object. But if you're just gazing and looking around in a room, your eye is much more like hopping. So I'm holding down, selecting the first zero key and shift and drag it. So that means the same keys are here. So from zero to 13, I have the same thing. And from 13 to 15, there is the jump. Okay, so now he's looking there. And then moving, and there is another jump at about 40. Okay, so at about 40, uh, there is no, the head movement is not corrected yet, so it's not animated yet, but uh, let me quickly make the change of the eye movements. So the eye is up there, and I'm dragging the key of 15 and a shift and drag, and now, okay, it was too close. I don't like to make it so snappy but a two frame is good. So zero, looking around, and eye is also popping. Now, the body is not moving that much. Maybe we can move the torso, but right now we are still have to animate the head. So at 40, the head is a little bit more tilted and more rotated and probably the hands are just moved slightly to to next to the body okay so this movement will be a slow movement so nothing happens from 0 to 40 the the arms are just a little bit relaxed so became relaxed okay so this is what happens and of course we need a blink and we need a, a kind of an expression of the face so when we are when we are creating the expressions now this is what happened I accidentally moved the camera so right now there is a camera animation so let me undo this and uh, if I want to look around in my file I have to use this uh, front or I can switch this front view to perspective by pressing P or, or pressing F to going back to front so whenever you see your camera is moving, uh, you can just go back to the zero keyframe, select the camera, and you can delete, uh, delete every key. Now, because it's a common error, let me show that. Okay, so I'm just uh, accidentally moving the camera. You don't even see keys here. I've, I've used the pan tool uh, to move the camera, but the animation is there. So how to get rid of it without leaving this uh, camera view mode. So what you can do is just go to the plus sign or go to the camera, click on the camera, left mouse button, and you can select camera. So once you have the camera selected, then we'll max show the keys. And before you're deleting the keys, the best thing if you're pressing the home button or just uh, going back to the first frame, selecting all the keyframes and delete but it's not enough. There is a camera target. So the camera is selected. The keyframes for the camera are deleted, but you still have a moving and animated select a camera target. So now, even if it's not visible, the camera is there. The camera target is there. So you can select again at zero. You can delete the keyframes. Be careful. When you are just uh, clicking and selecting the camera target itself and press delete that's not enough you have to go in here and select and highlight the keys and right after that you can press delete other than that this is what happens so if you just want to remove keys it's a common other error that uh, I've just selected um, this the zoom uh, controller so and if I'm if I'm pressing delete, even if I'm clicking in the timeline, the timeline is active, but I have no keyframe selected. And if I'm pressing delete now, it will delete uh, the actual model. Okay, so it deletes the model, it deletes the controller, and not the animation key. This is also happening time to time. So just don't forget, select the key, and then you can press delete.
All right. Okay, now we are moving back and uh, moving forward with the eye movement. So let me zoom in and let me select the blink. So what we have, we have a blink performed somewhere here, about frame five. So for that, I will just uh, leave auto key on. And because right now we are starting from zero, I can just drag it down and it will automatically create a zero key for me and do the same thing with the other. So there's a blink. And now I can select the, uh, the first zero key holding down shift and now it will open up but the open up is a little bit in the distance so here about 30 it is opening up but it is still leaving the top eyelid a little bit down so for that i will move it this way all right so because the figure is wondering hey what's going on what's happening so i will do the same thing here so there is a blink and it's a slow opening so select the other thing the other eye lid shift drag it out to 30 and move it to 30 range and then starting to uh getting back to the top eyelid all right because the figure is wondering all right so let me play the animation All right, so it's quite a believable uh, animation. Uh, it's still, I still have to create a preview, but uh, uh, before that, now animating the hands uh, is a little bit different because, uh, uh, let me show that. So here we go, we have the uh, arm selected and right now I'm not in a camera. So I, I, I will not use the camera, but uh, uh, we will walk through how this uh, animation is done. So first of all, uh, right now there's uh, this Jumbo Shrimp speech. Jumbo Shrimp. Jum okay, so the figure elevates the hands. Now first we are starting with uh, kind of a grounding key. And for that, it's not enough if you're just selecting the palm and setting up a key for that. You have to keyframe everything. That's usually the best and safest option to animate the, uh, the whole arms. Because if you're animating the, uh, the palm, you are thinking you're animating the palm, but not just the palm is animated. Also, the affected bones are animated. So when you are reviewing your animation and, and change things on the go, Usually you will end up messing uh, up the set of the keys. So the best thing, if you're just uh, going back, double clicking on the first and the hierarchy. So we have no color bones in this rig. Uh, there is uh, the, the upper arm. That's the root of the all of the bones uh, afterwards. So I'm double clicking on and now selected every keys and I'm hitting on set key. Okay, same thing on the other side. So double click and hitting on uh, set key and here we go. Okay, so that's fairly important. And now, where is our action? So just Jumbo, Jumbo here we go, about uh, 140. So let me lift this up. So selecting the palms and lift them up. Okay, and don't forget, when you do this, you are animating many other things at the same time. You're not animating the fingers, but you're definitely animating the elbows and, 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 and other, other elements. So let me push this, um, select it again, move this up, rotate, slightly rotate, and look for the expression all right so we have some kind of an expression like this this is a little bit more rotated and yeah 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 the the fingers and everything will will be animated later on okay so what's going on from this position to there we are lifting up the hand okay so it's not happening correctly if you don't have the sat keys all right because all the animation will start from zero 
and parts may be animated so for example the upper arm will be animated uh, in a different range and the fingers are animated in a different range and it can create a mess so uh, please keep in mind double click locking the animation by creating a set key and setting up the keys for everything then you go and then you can animate them uh, quite easily okay so now what's happening if you want to animate the palms for example animate the hands uh, maybe the, the expression of the hand is starting from about 130 so for that you can select double click in everything and set a key just for this part okay because this way you are locking down the animation of of the fingers uh, if you don't want to include the palm you can do something else you can do a double click selecting everything and then alt and clicking on the palm so that means you only have the fingers selected and now creating a key Okay, so this way you're not affecting the movement of the palm, you're not affecting the, the process of lifting up. So as you see, I'm, se I'm selecting this one, and now I have the only, only these two keyframes for that. But the fingers, so if you select any of the finger, it will show uh, this 130 as a kind of a, a, a key there. Now, to animating the finger simultaneously, what you can do is just select the palm, go to the motion panel, and you have a separated palm uh, area to animate the fingers so it's called digit manager and you can hit on fist and animate the weight of the fist so now I'm animating the fingers but be careful you're selecting the palm this is why you have these keys shown and not 130 but whenever you are selecting a new finger, it will show the actual keys. So from 130, from this relaxed pose, it will switch to kind of a gasping pose. Okay, it's not matching to the scene what you have, but you will get, it, get the idea. So if you want to move further and open up the hands, for example, about 150, you can do one thing to make it quicker. You can uh, double click on the root of uh, the first digit and you can just rotate them in loco mode and because you're rotating everything at the same time it will just straighten up so let me select double click and rotate now this selection might be a little bit of uh, a little bit hard because when you have a bone selected and you have the active gizmo it's hard to select something that is behind the gizmo so for example if I if I want to select the pinky first digit I can't really do that because the gizmo is covering that up so but if I'm zooming in now I can easily select it I can zoom out and I, it's hard to me for select something you can click away or and click in back again or zooming in make sure that the gizmo doesn't covering anything and then zooming back on okay so this is what you can do and right now let me select the double click and select everything and now I have all the keys now, as you see the hand is in position and the fingers are opening so this is what happens so the key trick here is not forgetting about giving the keyframes for the uh, for the zero keyframes for the uh, upper arm and the lower arm as well okay so starting from here lifting up and fingers okay so that's how it goes and of course if you want to smooth out the animation for example you don't want to make it so uh, so rigid you want to soften up things you can add a tiny movement like this is the, the uh, hands are expanding so going up and then expanding going up and then expanding now what's going on we have a z-axis movement so it's lifting up and then moving to uh, moving along the x-axis if you want to make it more smooth you can use the uh, curve editor and palm is selected so let me walk down we are animating a position now not really a uh, rotation z position zooming on the keys 
y position x okay so link data where we are all right zooming in everything local mode so that's it all right if we are changing these we can drag these uh, so the position of the hand is in this case is affected by uh, the uh, upper arm so upper arm and it's not really about position because the position is defined by the uh, rib cage but uh, instead of that it's about the rotation so X rotation if we're switching to rotation and it's loco mode X rotation is the red one so that is the outward rotation we can shrink and frame the keys so that means at this level rotation stops we can uh, we can uh, change this a little bit so for example we can select this area and choose and switch and move the handles to make the movement a little bit softer and then it stops okay we also have a rotation along the z-axis that would be the blue one so let me walk down select z z-axis and uh, it starts rotating so selecting here and if I move it let me test what's going on so this rotation oh instead of the Z axis better if I select the Y axis so this is what happens so lifting this up and down so I'm just moving and if I want to soften it up right now it's a little bit it stops a little bit uh, I can just uh, uh, speed up or slow down uh, the thing by uh, uh, animating and selecting the handles so for example this is a totally different curve now it's moving lifting up pulling in towards the body and then start moving away okay so um, you can play with these uh, Sometimes you don't even have to turn on auto key when you are in the curve mode. You can easily drag and modify the keys. Um, uh, you can add right click and switch to move keys, or you can add uh, or remove keys by using these buttons. But usually you are using the move tool to control what you already have laid out. Please keep that in mind. First, create the keys in the viewport. Uh, make sure your timing is fairly good. Uh, make sure you don't have uh, a big errors and you, uh, the animation is looking good from the camera and then uh, make these changes off with the curves. Okay, to speed up things, to add tiny secondary movements um, or stop uh, movements for some time, uh, it's, it's a good uh, way to use the curve editor. We are just uh, testing. Uh, what we have now so shift 3 and uh, the size is added uh, this image size is depending on the final resolution so if the final resolution is higher usually this percent of output is changing so it's an, an always um, it always worth the check so if you resize the window it will also affect this value so please keep that in mind so we are just uh, we have the physical camera that's great and we will render out what's going on with the camera create it and uh, see what ha what's happening the eyes are staying there and then just switching over and looking through okay so there's not much going on in the past part so now the mouth starts moving, all right. We got okay, so this is what happens, right? So we have a kind of a slow blink. Uh, we can adjust that so we can keep it like uh, if you want to elongate uh, the closed part. 
this is what you can do so you have the control selected and from 5 to about uh, 10 the eyes are fairly close so we can select shift and drag this out that means we have an elongated period of uh, the uh, eyelids being shut so the other one okay we have a keyframe here we have a keyframe here all right so closing keep it closed and then going there okay now if you want to see it in a, in a different way uh, you can open up the curve editor and check the various movements all right so right now I have this controller selected but uh, um, no I can keep it selected so let me walk down and look for Fred control blink left circle okay so the naming is fairly important you can check the name if you're selecting the correct controller or element or not now we have positions we have two positions we have the X and Y position both of these are animated so this is about the limited control of Bezier floats and that is animated and uh, let me choose the frame and zoom and now here we go so the X position is not changing that much uh, the Y position uh, is is slightly moving so this is what happens so let me zoom in and actually you can you can change this value if you want uh, just by dragging this okay so let me uh, drag the time slider so where is our time slider Oh, it's just too much so zooming in and I can actually drag this time slider here right clicking okay and here we are so this is our time slider this is where the eye is uh, closing so I can just s adjust it by dragging just by moving uh, the, the control the Bezier control uh, if uh, if it's easier on your eye you can choose this frame horizontal and vertical value expert uh, ex, uh, extents so now it's clearly it's a little bit easier to see how it's going on so we're starting from a zero value and then there's a minus three right now here it's about minus two and minus four is the maximum so if I want to make it a little bit closer, so I want to close it more, the bottom eyelid will be closed more. So if I want to alter the movements, I can just uh, change these. So for example, if I want to uh, open up this eye a little bit earlier on, I can drag this and play with that. So right now it's the bottom line it is closing up because the value is closer to 4 and then it slowly starts to open up again and then we are moving and as you see that right now there's a little bit of an asymmetry of this movement I think it's a little bit too early so what I will do is uh, I will just drag this back and uh, instead of that I will just add a little bit of a smoother closing so there's a shorter close and there's a kind of an opening and here the other side the right side is also starting the movement so right now it's a nice asymmetry uh, probably we can add more uh, uh, more symmetry just by dragging and moving away the keys that's also gives a nice touch on this so for that this these animated keys might be a little bit uh, later and I can select the other controller and those uh, actually I can keep them as as they are so right now the right eye is closing a little bit earlier and then the other one and probably uh, something like this so it will give you the the more uh, interesting effect okay 
And now the body is also switching. So the body is moving from 60 to about, about 85. Okay, so that's another uh, position. And for that, we have to select again the hip. The hip was animated and it was uh, moving from 0 to 30. So I'm selecting the 30, holding it down, shift, dragging it until 60, because right now we have kind of a stable pose. And from 60 to about 85, we are switching weight again. So from, from the 60, he, he is switching more to the uh, more weights to the left leg. So for that, pushing in and maybe lifting it is up a little bit. It's like a kind of a contrapose too. It's a little bit of a, a, a suspicion uh, appearing on the face. So it's like uh, keeping distance. Hey, hey, we are not in the same group, so we are keeping the distance. This is why uh, there's, there's a little bit of an elevation and a little bit uh, the body is pulled back a bit. Uh, we can also uh, animate the ribcage, but right now, because the ribcage was not animated yet, I will go back to frame 60 and just press a set key option. And now, when I'm animating uh, at 85, so I'm adding uh, kind of a, uh, a tilt here, like balancing the contrapost. Uh, and also slight rotation. So right now this uh, movement will happen from 60 to 85, okay? I don't even have a zero key for that. So this is what happens, the body, and now it's just a little bit of a suspicion, that's what's going on. Hey, what are you talking about? Look, and... <laughs> And then, of course, the head movement have to follow the thing. Now, but because of the rib cage is moving, and because uh, the figure is preparing to talk, uh, usually there is a kind of a compression period for that. So in 3D, usually the breathing uh, could be uh, shown through uh, hand movements. So if if a tiny tiny movement of the hand is appearing, usually that will give you the illusion of the rib cage is um, sucking in air uh, the lungs so for that uh, right now there is no movement I can make a tiny tiny change on the arms and it will create a uh, little uh, just a, a tiny tiny change on the go and then from 60 to 85 I can completely put down the arms and pull them beside the rib cage. Even a slight rotation is like, it's kind of a gesture to, to start and, and address uh, the talk. And here, at about 9 to 5, there is another keyframe for me uh, for the head. Looking up, and also, don't forget, we have the eyes looking up as well. So, zooming out, selecting this one, and moving it. Now, right now, the last time I was animating this, it was about the 40 keyframe. Now, if I start animating from uh, at this 20, uh, 95, I guess I will skip a couple eye movements. So, before we are completing the animation of the eyes at the 95, I will get back and look for previous positions. So this is the last time we had a position, looking for the uh, right side of the uh, left side of the screen, and here is looking uh, a little bit in front. So that will be the next, looking in front, a little bit up, not exactly in the camera. And of course, I have to select the previous keyframe, shift and drag, and look at here. And then, this is the next side movement, about 80, looking aside. So, looking aside. 
like hey what ha are you doing so shift and drag again selecting this one shift and drag we got and here there is a quick change here yep about 90 okay so about 90 lift looking it up this is oh my god so this is the expression here shift and drag okay the head movement is a little bit slow and also uh, there will be cases where you don't want to see the eye controller so big uh, and uh, to resolve this problem uh, there, the eye control is a circle and uh, we have an option called rendering and uh, the thickness this uh, map uh, this radial thickness is enabled in the viewport so we can turn this off or turn back on anytime you wish and now you see only the uh, uh, edge version only the wire version of the controller okay uh, the head movements so let me select the head and the problem with the head is right now we have a key at 30 at 40 and from 40 to 95 it is just one single motion but here there is an in-between position and that is a little bit off so let me put it in 65 and turn it more to the camera and right now there is so it's moving constantly now if you don't want to make this constant move just let me play this in the viewport so play it we got we got okay so right now the movement is a fluid constant movement because of the auto key and uh, because of the, the keys are connected uh, smoothly with a tangent curve. So for that, if you want to, for example, manipulate this movement, but because right now it starts too early. So the frog starts moving too early. Here's the, the, the movement is actually starting from here at about 80. So I can select the movement shift and drag the copy and the key the body is moving but the head is not moving yet but the head is moving we got from here we got okay so this is what we can do now if you want to check um, your your uh, keys uh, one great way is if uh, you're switching to the key mode toggle now by default the, the point and comma buttons on the keyboard is uh, this is the point I'm pressing this and uh, frame by frame I can uh, progress the other thing the other direction is the comma key but this is just one frame if you already have plenty of keys and you want to review your keys you want to check what's going on what's wrong or right you can go and select key mode toggle and with key mode toggle turned on you can press the next key button or you can press this point and comma and check the uh, the keyframes and you can check the movement so if it's good or not all right so this is how it goes and let me create the preview so shift V and just hit enter but before I hit enter I will check that physical camera is there and then uh, the animation is recorded this is the preview if you have uh, a, a fairly solid model with some uh, good basic textures, uh, usually it's enough for reviewing things. Uh, but we will uh, look into the rendering part uh, just in a moment. Okay, so just let me complete this render. We got okay, so this is the basic um, uh, animation of the first uh, couple hundreds. Uh, yes, you can add more expressions. Yes, you can add uh, eyebrow movements. You can change the eyeball size. Uh, so it's, it's it's a lot of things that you can do. But right now, uh, for going through the things, this will be fair for us. So let me close this and let me open up the render dialog. So F10 is the hotkey for the render dialog. And this 
uh, set is uh, let me turn on turn off auto key and this one is uh, set to ART renderer it's not really a a perfect perfect renderer but it's relatively fast and it will give uh, pretty convincing results at the end and you can test out many things so right now the output size is about uh, a half HD which one is good but it may be slow uh, but for uh, creating still images it is uh, it is working fine okay so for testing that uh, we can uh, select uh, the time slider okay so let me let me select a frame like this and right now this is set to single mode and when single mode is selected and you have a timeline somewhere and you press render it will start rendering the frame but here it won't get you the nicest result if you see this bright white background let me hit cancel the reason is that your environment is not loaded in okay so right now we are animating without the backdrop the backdrop is important because the light is physically based so if you have light sources but there is no environment that reflects that uh, bounces the light uh, rays uh, the outcome will be uh, significantly off so let me close this render setup and to open up and show your environment you have to enable the layers and untick the environment so environment is there now another typical issue that this environment this reference video is on a plane so as you see the corner of the video is visible here on this uh, on, on the camera so if I want to turn this off let me just turn off the visibility I can turn it back on every time in any time so for that right now it's turned off uh, because it also generates shadows so keep that in mind if you don't want something or you don't need something turn it off hide it away even if it's not visible in the screen it can generate shadows it can um, affect your lighting uh, and it will slow down it may slow down the rendering process okay so we are at number three frame number three and let me try it again so F10 and I'm hitting render nothing is adjusted just let me go that go for that All right it's a fairly big frame rendering will tell you the last frame time and many other informations once we have an animation uh, running it tells you the number of the frames so it's a one of one so it's a single frame renderer uh, there are no passes number three frame is rendered here's the resolution and many other things if you don't see this in the whole you can just select this edge at the bottom and drag it out sometimes during update it takes more time to open up so when when the software is running uh, heavily you have to wait for it now let me uh, show this uh, it is a little bit slower because I have a recording going on but what you see here is we are you know, using an ART renderer and that is iteration based so what does it mean uh, the image will start pretty grainy and it will remain fairly grainy until the end uh, but there is a noise uh, filter that is added once the rendering is done so once we have completed the calculation uh, then uh, the noise filter will be added now the biggest problem with that is uh, here's the target so we are just reaching soon for that one minute and 25 seconds is rendered already so it's a fairly it, it is fairly slow if you have to uh, render out hundreds on your laptop it it can take plenty of hours so um, right now we are just using it for reviewing uh, the figure and check what's going on uh, but it's not a necessity to render out everything uh, checking animation uh, it's a preview is uh, a good method all right 
Now we reached the level, almost. Here we are. And yes, it's raining for two minutes. And now it's still grainy. And it will just receive the uh, noise filter. Okay. So the noise filter is just smoothing out a couple of things. But the problem is the, the stronger the noise filter, usually the texture is also smoothed out. Okay. So keep that in mind. Now, let me just, using the scroll can help you to resize this. If you want to test out things or you want to save it, you can save it here, save image, and as you wish, you can save it uh, for yourself. Now, let me hit on cancel. And um, we can also cre uh, create a clone. Clones are great if you want to create a comparison. So for example, if you want to um, change the camera angle, uh, for your entire animation, uh, you can do that. Or uh, if you just want to keep that uh, as a uh, kind of a feedback on the previous pose of the figure. So that's how it goes. Now, <clears throat> let me close it. And uh, here's an, another important information on top left corner. Once the rendering is performed, you will see that rendering time and it's about um, two minutes and uh, 19 seconds. For for a simple class or just testing and, and looking around, it's not, I, I like to keep it below one minute. Uh, once you have a perfect rendering, once you have a perfect animation, then you can crank it up. But usually uh, at, at the beginning stages, you don't need, really need to crank it up. It can just uh, uh, keep your computer busy and uh, without any significant difference so uh, a good in between a resolution is about 800 which one is fairly low so 800 by, by uh, 450 it is a fairly low resolution but it will still give you a nice look and uh, you can still render out your things now the draft and a medium so between I can lower this down a little bit more I can increase the filtering so we can uh, uh, earn some time with that so the last frame time was about two minutes and, and uh, uh, 19 so let me hit on render again and test this so here's the frame it's still fairly okay and as you see the panel remembers the last frame time and this last frame time is is not written in stone so a lot of beginning renderers uh, think that this will remain all the time. So if I'm updating this and uh, the, f the new number will be about uh, one minute, uh, it's not true that the entire animation will be one minute frame by frame to render. So uh, usually when you have more action, whether you have more changes, more, more uh, uh, things appearing on a scene or more reflections for example that can alter the rendering time frame by frame and uh, because of that it's a uh, it's a good trick to render uh, frames with more action and check that time now as you see it's about uh, 41 but when I have a full expression and many other things it could be about uh, 55 uh, 60 okay so if I have a, a 300, about 10 seconds, so if I have about the 300 frames, you can calculate then uh, how much is that. Okay, so 40 seconds is, uh, you can calculate roughly about one minute per frame. So it can take plenty of hours, about uh, five, six hours uh, to render out uh, all of these few hundred frames. Okay, so let me close this and uh, Another way to test this or just uh, looking for errors or looking for uh, interesting things that uh, you can create a every NTH frame. So we can go to active time segment and active time segment from 0 to 100 and we can test render frames like uh, uh, maybe 20 
so every 20th frame will be rendered so that means about five frame uh, during this uh, range and uh, I will set it to a very low resolution so it will be very very small not that small but small and because uh, I will render multiple frames it's not a video it's just an image segments with a, with a big gap between the, set, uh, the frames I have to set up a file so let me go to desktop create a new folder and test and uh, it will be test 001 00 and JPEG so save it maximum quality okay so here we go we have a render output and uh, right now I can hit a render and this trick is used to check for randomly not almost randomly but check errors on the go and uh, right now it's uh, frame zero and uh, the last was 41 seconds now it is 17 and this one's frame 20 so why do I like this method the reason is when when the figure is speaking when you have multiple uh, morphs used at the same time uh, you can often get errors where uh, for example the eye is not perfectly fitted in the eye socket or the tongue is visible through the mouth or something like that okay think uh, errors like this uh, but by using a very low resolution rendering and using this trick to uh, kind of uh, limit the render uh, the number of the frames you can get a nice kind of a comic stripe for yourself as a reference okay so it can, it can uh, help a lot it is also good for um, consultation or just picking uh, picking ideas discussing uh, now uh, there is an error with the camera here so it's not really nice to touch uh, the frame this way uh, and also probably the camera position is, is, is not that good for, uh, either for here so maybe I can move down the figure a bit so the, the figure is elevating too much uh, when the hip uh, was animated so now I have a couple frames let me open up the folder so here is the folder and here here are the the various keys and now it's because uh, 01 was uh, 00 was included uh, we have six frames okay let me close this down and what about rendering uh, an animation so it will render without the sound uh, one common thing is uh, I like to use is you can choose the sequence but then you have to uh, fit the sequence playback with the sound sometimes that's a little bit tricky you have to nesting uh, these uh, in uh, in Premiere for example uh, one uh, easy solution is to save uh, the file with uh, as a quick time so let me switch this to quick time movie and uh, it will be QT test and uh, here there is the setup button so before I'm completing I have to adjust the setup here at this time before the rendering is done so setup and it will take some time and compression type it, it is okay frames per second 30 frames per second this will do fine for us best quality be careful do not use this animation okay do not use that if you don't have this compression setting so 3ds max will not tell you but if you don't have quicktime installed you have to install it first restart 3ds max and then go in, in the setup so if you see that you're clicking on the setup and just hitting on hitting on and nothing happens this is not coming up you have to uh, load quicktime uh, download QuickTime first and then you will get the settings you can choose other uh, uh, other compression methods you can choose AVI but usually that's fairly big so if you don't have QuickTime uh, you can create a sequence and then uh, edit in afterwards and uh, make sure that the sound speed 
and uh, and the frame speed of the individual frames uh, frame segments uh, will match okay I like to use this as a simple one so let me keep this hit on save and accepting it all right so this is what we are looking for and don't forget uh, to adjust the uh, resolution so right now I will go with this fairly low resolution because it was 15 seconds just and I will do uh, a active time segment but every every one all of the frames are rendered and uh, all other settings are okay so let me hit on and click render and it's a hundred so it will take some time but uh, let me let me talk about a few things so starting at the first zero keyframe last frame for time was uh, 15 seconds we have this two values now this elapsed time is showing up everything that takes to render the the, uh, the image so this calculates the loading time and everything now once you have a frame uh, and um, sequence loaded in usually this last frame time drops okay so if you want to calculate the time you need to wait until the whole rendering is complete you have to have at least about the first first five ten images to be rendered to get a relatively accurate number of the estimated time remaining okay so they forgot this tiny tiny word that is really important that's estimated time remaining okay so it's absolutely not true and as you see it's 14 seconds but it is changing about half a minute so one frame was completed and instead of removing this value from here it's changing with 32 seconds and right now it's changing even more so time remaining is a good thing to see but it's not that accurate until you reach a relatively solid number of uh, frames the other thing I was talking about once the figure is um, starts talking and it will start opening the mouth and the mouth will receive shadows and, and reflections and everything then the frame time can uh, uh, increase okay so that's how it goes all right let me stop this I have a, a rendering created so let me just go uh, this was a mob file okay so just increase it so this is about an 800 and uh, um, the width is about 800 and uh, 450 uh, was the resolution so it's a fairly small and uh, small video and as you see the noise in here is animated uh, the more uh, you crank up uh, the uh, quality of the render uh, the less noise it will be or you can use a background texture you can uh, create a curtain uh, if you wish uh, it's depending on uh, your t uh, your idea so you don't have to use this uh, simple backdrop that usually it's it's kind of a neutral uh, 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 gives a neutral look uh, you can animate the camera you can move the camera around but from an animation point it's not really worth to do it so if you want just to present your skills or just to focusing on the animation a still camera is, is absolutely a, a good uh, option to deal with and as you see right now we are reaching uh, a kind of a good value so as as this uh, uh, change here in the time remaining uh, catches up with the value of the last frame time and you see the 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 uh, decrease of this value is, is coming in these increments like 14 then uh, it will give you a good uh, information relatively accurate information about the final rendering so we don't want to wait for that uh, to complete just let me hit cancel and uh, let me close this and so this was about uh, working uh, 
around the animation of the body and creating the expressions and how to render this. Uh, if you have time, you can render out uh, the whole animation uh, with lights and camera. Uh, if not, a preview is usually a good thing to start with. So thank you very much and uh, have fun. See you next time. Goodbye.